What's up y'all, Ron Quack here, and in this video, we're going over every single item I got from Blade Show, as well as highlights from the final day on the show floor, talking about beginner-friendly knives and everyday carry maintenance from brands like We Savivi, Work Sharp, and KPL. Woo! We are in the small room on day three Blade Show Atlanta, and it is still packed. Yeah, it's cool this morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know we had to come back. <laughs> you know we had to come back and get some swag. Okay, so there's some like rust or this is Maximet, so it's not stainless. So there's a little bit of stuff on there and Mr. Man over here is gonna try and and let us know what knife shield does. Yeah, we're just gonna take a little bit of knife shield. But you can see it's coming off already with the really stuck on stuff. But yeah. we even do is just to spray on and let it sit for a little soak. You're in charge. Yeah. Sure. Soak yeah. for maybe 15, 20 yeah. seconds. All right, we're at KPL. I'm talking to Ryan. What's thank, up? Thank you for chatting with me today. Yeah. As a knife beginner, one thing that I learned a lot about was knife maintenance. It's a big part of carrying a knife, and you can buy a sharp knife all you want. As soon as it's dull, as soon as it's not working the way you want it to, you gotta start maintaining it. Otherwise, it's frustrating. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> introduce yourself and tell yeah. me what you do. So I'm Ryan, we're with Knife Pivot Lube. We are the knife maintenance and care company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started off with our just our knife oils about five years ago, but now we cover the, the full spectrum of rust prevention, knife care, oiling, and uh, making sure that this thing continues to perform. When your knife gets slow or comes right new from the factory, you simply apply a drop using our needle applicator to each side of the blade. That wicks so in really quickly. I rarely take my knives apart because I, I find that frustrating yeah. and you know, depending on how mechanical you are, that could be a challenge. And then very quickly that improves the function of the knife and yeah. it's something you can feel right away. Yeah. We're also really focused in our chemical engineering on keeping dirt and grit and pocket lint in suspension within the liquid mm -hmm. so that as the knife moves, those particulates can move out of the way of the parts of the knife. Okay. As far as protecting and cleaning the blade, we've got our knife shield and that's designed to take you know adhesive residue and that gummy tape stuff you get from cutting boxes yeah. oh yeah and pull that off the blade as well as something like gasoline but it's food safe and water based it leaves behind a film that's dry and clean it's not something you can feel but it prevents rust even in the days and weeks and months after you've used it on the knife surface oh. so you don't have an oily mess to prevent that rust especially on something like your uh, Maximate here that can be prone to patina mm -hmm. over time. Along with that, we do an assortment of other weights of oils. So our ultralight is really quite thin and that's designed for your switch blades and out the front knives, mm -hmm. where you want all that speed preserved but still need smoothness because yeah. you don't want them slowed down. And then we've got our very heavyweight lube that's more of a gel-like consistency. Oh. And uh, you can see it's it's really quite thick. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is popular with ballet song flippers, oh. where they've got so much momentum moving. Oh. Provides a little bit of cushion. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of our users love to put a dab of this just right on that detent ball mm. inside the knife, because it'll tend to stay put. Okay. For a knife beginner that's interested in knives, not sure what to do to get into it, what would your number one suggestion for them be? Man, the world is so open to you nowadays. Yeah. You know, yeah. for $50, $60, you can get a knife that is as good as something that cost $400 yeah. was a few, just a few years back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, I would hop on on the Insta on Instagram yeah. and look up the EDC community and see what they're recommending okay. because I feel like you guys are really good at picking like a, a good all-around knife and making <laughs> a quality recommendation. For sure. For something, you know, they may not want a big stabby knife or a yeah, big yeah. defensive tactical knife. Right. If you want an American company, pick one of those if, yeah. if you don't have a preference. Uh, the stuff that's being made all over the world, whether it's Italy or Asia, is, yeah. it's really stellar. So. All right, so can't go wrong, really. Just yeah. go with what you like, what you think you like, and just explore, yeah? Yeah. Amazing. And the steels that are available nowadays have gotten so good yeah. that it's it's hard to mess up. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, Ryan, thank yeah. you so much for chatting with me. Good looking sticker. Ooh, coming up. 
Huge shout out to Urban EDC who made this entire trip possible. If you're looking for a bespoke marketplace with limited drops, exclusive gear, things that you may not be able to find easily anywhere else, Urban EDC has sourced it. And they're always rotating their stock. If you wanna find cool stuff, things to make your EDC gear happy, or if you just wanna learn a little more about things as a beginner, where to find limited drops, exclusive things like that. I know I had a lot of trouble finding out about these types of things when I first started my EDC journey, but Urban EDC has been a huge resource and just to see what's out there. So if you're interested, learn more, head over to urbanedc.com. Thank you for sponsoring this trip and this video, Urban EDC. We are at the Workshop booth. We've been waiting all show to come here. We've got Kyle. What's up, man? What's Great up, to buddy? finally chat with yeah, you. For sure. Tell us a little bit about what you got going on. All right, so we've got the Propier. It just came out a couple months ago, and it's been going like crazy, man. Yeah. Selling out like, like, like wildfire. We can't keep it in stock. Yeah. Um, and it's because it's, it's basically uh, came from our original Precision Adjust you see over here. We came out with that. People love this this unit, but there was a few things that we got some feedback on that you know for 60 bucks it does your EDC is great, but like there were some limitations. So that's how we came up with the Propier. Basically, on the feedback we heard, we went, we want to do bigger blades. We want more accuracy. We want it to be more rigid. We want to be able to do smaller knives. So we took all that cooked it up and it came out to be the Pro PA and so um, what we've got here is the ability to go from 15 to 30 degrees anywhere in between and then basically when you go to sharpen you select your abrasive starting at you've got 220, 320, 400, 600, 800, uh, ceramic cone and a leather strop. So you got a wide array of abrasives to be able to get the fit and finish you want. When you go to start sharpening your knife you're just going to throw it in here Clamp it up, the clamp jaws are spring loaded. Tighten that down, insert the clamp like this. And then you're gonna set your abrasive up here. And then the first thing we're gonna do is get our angle figured out. So we've got this digital angle indicator. Turn it on, zero it out on the surface you're gonna sharpen on. Set it here and then you can Dial it in within the quarter degree of whatever angle you want to be at. That's awesome. So let's I see feel like that is a game-changing feature because I've worked with the the precision adjust, right? And then having this digital angle indicator is just like makes it so much easier for you to just dial it in and make sure you're at the right angle. At the want. exact angle you want to be, because this is a rough kind of gets you roughed in. But yeah. different blades have different blade heights, so you want to make sure if you want a precise angle, you've got the option now. So yeah. once you've got your angles figured out, you sharpen one side. Get your burr on that side, and then when you're done on that side of it, you simply push this red knob down, flip it over, puts it right in position to sharpen the opposite side as well. So that's been, you know, tried and true to the form factor of the original. Yep. That takes care of your most of your EDCs, but what we also heard was we wanted to be able to do larger knives. So what we did for that is we put this large blades clamp support on, you slide that on here, put that back down on there, and now you're able to do, pretend this is like a big kitchen knife, you've got enough support on that clamp yeah. to be able to support it as you do larger knives that you have a bigger throw for. So it supports that. We also thought of, you can't rotate a big knife, so you gotta be able to tilt this thing back, rotate the knife, yeah. and not make it too much extra work when it comes to sharpening that type More of work as well. Right, exactly, 100%. That's amazing. On the opposite end of that, we heard people want to be able to do smaller knives, yeah. so that that's, that includes knives, you know, as small as like this pin knife here. Oh, nice. That would get swallowed up in a clamp like that, so what we did for that is we'll rotate this back, oh, sorry, rotate that back, pull that off of there, remove the clamp, set that aside, and we've got the small knife table now as well. Oh. Right there to be able to accommodate for your smaller knives. Oh, so you wow. set that, it's magnetic, yeah. and you're able to sharpen small pen knives as well. Wow, and it's the same angle and everything. You exactly, you can even set this on here, redo the digital angle indicator to get yeah. that perfect angle that you want, oh, man. and you can do tiny knives as well. So that's that's really how this came to be, is just feedback from the community, yeah. people wanting like a little bit more, so we tried to answer the call. And we're not done with this yet either. It's a platform we want to build on, Okay. so keep giving us that feedback, let us know what you want to see for this, and we'll keep trying to develop further. So, that's amazing, yeah, man. awesome, awesome. And I'm covering the show as a knife beginner, so from that perspective, what's the number one tip you can offer people who are interested in knives, trying to get into it, especially from your perspective from workshop? Yeah. Um 
pick a sharpener that's going to match your budget as far as knives go. I think that's always a good place to start. So if you're just into EDCs and you're just getting into it and you know you're in that like $50, $100, maybe $200 knife range, yeah. I can maybe start with the precision adjust and be able to sharpen those kinds of knives. Yeah. And then if you start getting into it, you're like, man, I really enjoy this and I want to invest further and you start getting into more expensive knives, yeah. then jump up to a sharpener maybe like this, try to match that budget, take sure. care of those knives as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just a fun way to kind of get to know your knives as well. Sharpening, you get to learn little tricks about your knife. Like, is it thicker in the heel? Is it thinner out towards the front? And as yeah. you sharpen, you kind of learn that stuff. I don't know. Sharpening kind of opens up new doors to appreciate knives for me Absolutely. in a way that I didn't before. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a whole other world because you can buy a sharp knife, yep. but as soon as that dulls down, what are you going to do? Right. Buy a new knife? Well, well some people love that part of it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, well, thank you for talking to me, for sure, I really appreciate it. Yep. This is WorkSharp. This is their new Precision Adjust Professional Pro PA. Yep. You can check it out on their website, and there will be a link you can use over on my Instagram as well. And uh, as soon as it's in stock, is it in stock right now? Every Monday we're doing drops right now, so okay. restock. So every Monday we restock at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So uh, use Ron's link, head over to the website, and try and snag one. For sure. Thanks a lot, Kyle. I appreciate right, right, for you. For sure. We are at Wee Civivi. We got Seth here to tell us a little bit about what they brought to the show. What you got, man? Good to, man, good to see you, Man, it's so good to see you. I'm yeah, glad yeah. you could come. Absolutely. Glad you could come by. Thank you. Um, we got a couple of things I wanted to talk about. First of all, um, the Blade Show Awards were last night. Right? We always always love the Blade Show Awards, always are submitting product, and we came away with one really cool award for a collaboration that we just oh. did with GTC Knives. Okay, that's right? awesome. This is the, the Wii Knives Solid. Right? It's an integral frame lock, um, 20 CV, Using, utilizing his SLT uh, flipper design. Oh. So it's got that spring-loaded tab on there. Yeah. And if you guys are not familiar with that, it's it's something that's super different, right? Oh, my goodness. You can see there's a little bit of a spring there. Go ahead yeah. and give it a try. Okay, so you just... Oh, okay. It's, it's almost like it loads it up yeah. before uh, the blade deploys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives it a really cool feel, and then the flipper tab disappears so that it's not sticking out the bottom oh, of the yeah. knife like a yeah. typical design would. Okay. Oh yeah, it just completely tucks away. Yeah. Real clean. And uh, for those who don't know, what's an integral knife? An integral knife yeah. means that the handle is made of one solid piece of material. Okay. So this is titanium and it started as a block and it was just milled out and, cre and created the knife handle. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. No, it, it, it's a great looking piece and that little flipper tab and delete there is amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Re it's really cool. Continuing kind of in that same vein, we have an in-house design. So this is designed by uh, Wii or Civivi. This is called the Cubit. It's got an integrated bottle opener in the blade oh. here. It's a button lock and it's an aluminum handle. Okay. So this is one of the very first aluminum handled knives that Civivi has done. Okay. It's been out for just a little bit. Yeah. And there's a few different color variations. This one again is in that uh, I want to say it's sixty-seven dollars. Okay. Um, for this aluminum button lock, go ahead and give that one a try. Yeah. It feels like the, the I want to say like the momentum arm is like really tight and dialed mm -hmm. in. Yeah, the geometry on it is really, really good. Yeah. Now this right here, um, I believe would make a fantastic beginner's knife. Something yeah. for somebody who's kind of getting into EDC. Um, it's a, a thin profile, it's super lightweight. It's not too big, but it's big enough to handle uh, most of your everyday tasks. Yeah. Uh, fantastic beginner's knife right here. For sure, yeah, I'm covering the show as a knife beginner, so I, I mean, with all the customs and limited drops that everyone's doing, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah. So to be able to see like something that's a little more budget, a little more accessible, and a good place to start. I think that that's wonderful for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, this looks familiar. It's like my operator Malibu, right? Oh, that is an auto. And that kicks like crazy. You don't want to see that again. Oh, did you see that? It almost popped out of my hand. But this looks awesome. Wow. There's so, so many people here. I keep saying that, but it's, it's nuts. Yo. <laughs> you want to ask you a few questions about daily customs? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. He's the point man. He's like, get out. My brain's not working right now. <laughs> All right, we're at Daily Customs. We're here to talk a little bit about your wares. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, hi. So my name is Niels, and I'm working for Daily Customs for like uh, one and a half years now. So we started back in the day with customized scales for the Victorinox SAK knives. Now here we have some normal of the canvas Mikata and some vintage Mikata, but we 
also produced them in titanium, brass, and then we did some CNC machining, uh, fun little logos. So we started a collaboration with the German brand Boker, mm -hmm. and uh, here you can see we have these two types of blades. Uh, one is a reverse Tanto blade, the other one is a drop point blade. And the yes. blades are made by Boker, and the scales are all made by us, Daily Customs, in Hamburg, Germany. And we have different configurations. You can buy them in different materials, like I said, Makata, Altam, Titanium. Yeah. And then we also do some patterns on them or work with some inlays, as you can see here. You can uh, combine them however you want and also choose your carry option with the Kydex sheath or leather sheath to fit into your pocket. These yeah. look amazing. They are. Like, I love like, how minimal and cutting edge they look, like very sharp angles. Yes. We're at Null Knives. This is Sean. Hey, What's man. up, man? What's going on? Thanks for talking to me, yeah. man. Tell us a little bit about yourself, man, what you're doing today. For sure. So I'm from uh, New York, just like 30 minutes outside of the city. Uh, and we started this company back in like 2020. I've uh, been grinding it since then. We had our first model, the Raiden. Uh, we don't have any on the table, unfortunately. Those are still sold out. We have our second model, the Voodoo, and this one's been pretty darn popular. This guy has a 3 inch or 3.6 inch hollow ground and 390 blade, deep hollow ground switch right here, full titanium scales and a bolster lock construction with black knight tartar scales. Yeah, the action on these are super silky. Man. Very, oh, yeah. It looks course. awesome. Like, you. I, you were showing it to me earlier, and what stood out to me was that thumb stud. Just being able to really wedge your finger in there instead of just slipping off on a cylindrical one. Yeah, so that took a little time to like nail down that aspect of the yeah, design. Yeah. It's That's a little crazy. bit of trial and error, but I, you know, I think we really nailed it down. And you get that thumb flick and the reverse flick. From a knife beginner's perspective, what would your number one tip for these guys be? Number one tip is, uh, you know, really explore your options, see what's out there, and uh, have fun with it. Like, that's what it is. You know, that's what the hobby is. There's a lot of great stuff out there. So, yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for your time, man. I picked up a few things at Blade Show. No knives, surprisingly, but got to show you all that. We're going to do a full gear haul when we get back. And um, we got that live stream. We're doing the Sunday night live stream, and that's where we'll link up with Brandon. It's going to be fun. Fun. It's gonna be fun. So, this is it. This is Blade Show Atlanta. It's been a crazy experience. Thousand exhibitors. I heard there was 25,000 people here. Nuts. We're walking out through the doors. Whew. Welcome and goodbye. All right, y'all, the moment you guys have been waiting for. This is my Blade Show haul. Every single item I got at the show. Everything's in this box in no particular order. Just gonna run through it. Okay, first, we have Pete's Pirate Life Pendants. Fly the flag. The skull. Pete's Pirate Life. I told you I had to pick up some swag from him. Next, we've got some Wii Savivi stuff. This is a planner, I believe. A coaster. Oh, more Pete's Pirate Life stickers. I haven't opened this yet. Oh, we got an arc form pry bar. Now, this is interesting. I love the geometric look. It's very orthogonal, very sharp edges, and looks like it's a mean pry. More Savivi stuff, keychain pry bar. The Silent Golfer Ball Marker. Shout out to you, Matt, for giving this to me. I'm still sad that we didn't get to play golf together, man. The JRW, this is a, I want to say the consolation prize, but basically it's a 3D printed trophy. It's got the curator on top. We've got some patches from Daily Customs Co. Let's see. Oh, we've got a Zero Feud Flicker Fidget Thing. It's a crossover between mechanical keyboards, everyday carry, fidget, pocket art. I'm really nerding out about this because I'm a big mechanical keyboard guy. Got some KPL stuff. Got a knife shield. We've got dry film and we've got some q-tips these are ultra micro one millimeter knife care swabs Ugh. i swear we're never gonna run out of wee savivi swag got some stuff from all american maker this is the knife log book i believe he released these during the show but to keep track of the knives you buy sell the value the nice guy machine company i got the lady finger wait it's right here yes i knew i threw it in there check that out boom that ultim beat at the end. Woo! We got more Pete's Pirate Life swag. Multicam black. Sweet bag it comes in. We've got a few knives from Eutectic, the Trinity, I believe. This one is big. <laughs> field duty. Oh, I think we've got the field duty and the Tonto one. So 
This, I think, is the field duty. I mean, I guess we can open it right now. Yeah, this is the Tonto one right here. Dude, I struggled so hard with the frame locks, especially handling the Urban Minimalist. I couldn't do it, man. Some Pete's Pirate Life keycaps. These are for the MacBook Pros. Okay, okay, this one is actually pretty cool. This is a coin on one side. It says, buy the knife. And on the other side, it says, flip again, so. You can see what kind of outcomes you're dealing with. Knife Lounge, Titanium, and Ultim Worry Stone. Of course, had to do it in Ultim. Got some more lanyards. These were for displaying your badge. And finally, how fitting. <laughs> a Wii sticker and a Pete's Pirate Life sticker. Boom. And we're done. That's it. That's everything I got at Blade Show. Now that the biggest knife show of the year is in the rear view, we've got a few weeks to digest everything that we saw. I've got three major takeaways or tips on how to approach Blade Shows and other convention shows to improve your experience while you're attending one of these things. Tip number one, just go. Just attend. Don't overthink it. Attending a Blade Show, seeing, chatting, interacting with real live people who are just as stoked as you are about this hobby if not more is invaluable you'll learn so much and it's a totally fun time tip number two is plan plan beforehand what items you're gonna go for what route you're gonna take on the show floor map how much money you're budgeting for this even essential needs like food and drink there's almost always gonna be more stuff there than the two or three days the show is going to run for. You won't have time to hit everything, so definitely sit down and plan it out. Tip number three, of course, is purpose. While you're walking the show floor, soaking in all the cool things, always keep in mind the why and the how. Keep in your mind your journey and experiences all the way up to this point, but also keep an open mind on what other people are saying, their journeys, their experiences, and always try to be answering the question, how can, upon hearing this, I improve on my own experience or how I do things or why something is beneficial and worth looking into? I hope you enjoyed this multi-video breakdown on Blade Show Atlanta. I've got a complete playlist in the description below on everything I covered in Blade Show Texas as well as Atlanta. If you want to check that out, it's going to be right there. Hopefully, I'll see you guys at Blade Show West. Blue Purpose. Peace.